Welcome back. So, today I'm touching on a Jordan Peterson topic today. And this is about how Jordan Peterson sorted himself out when he was 25. Now, a lot of us, or I'm assuming a lot of people that watch my videos, I haven't checked the analytics, are younger, younger type audiences. Like people within the 18 to 27 range, I'm guessing somewhere around there. But... Regardless, that's kind of who I'm targeting. The The result at the end of the day is, as young men, I think a lot of us are lost. Um, I myself, am, I don't even fully understand the scope of like what the world is yet, especially being at 24. And I know that for a lot of people, these types of things can really overwhelm and overconsume them until it gets to a point where it becomes too late to really make a massive change or get to the destination that you really want to get to. Now, there's also the, the notion that, all right, cool, no time is ever too late to change, which is true. But at the same time, as younger guys, it's better for us to start early and to start going on that path right now as soon as possible and start getting straight and serious with what we want to do with our lives so we're gonna dive into this video and there's a few things i want to touch on but let's get right into it what were you like when i was 25 hmm well i was obsessed um 25 so that would have been 87 i'd been in graduate school for two years well you know um when I was 25 or so, I probably weighed about 138 pounds. I smoked like a pack of cigarettes a day. I drank tremendous amount of alcohol. I was from northern Alberta, this rough little town up in northern Alberta called Fairview. And, you know, there were long winters there, and my friends were heavy drinkers. And most of them dropped out of school by the time they were 15 or 16, went off to work on the oil rigs. And, you know, it was a rough town, and we drank a lot. And I started when I was 14, and, you know, um, and so I was, I had a lot of bad habits, let's say, and uh, things that were, and I wasn't in great shape physically. And I was also still intellectually obsessed by, as I am now. And uh, so that would have been, that would have been in 85. But when I, but I decided around then about 85, 84, something like that, maybe a little earlier that I was really going to try to get my act together. And uh, so I started doing that. I, you know, I, first of all, I, I quit smoking. Well, that took a long time because I eventually had to quit drinking too in order to quit smoking. And I started working out, start playing sports, which I'd never done. I was a small kid. I'd been skipped a grade and I was a small, small for my age. So sports were never, especially team sports, were never really a domain of expertise for me. Um, although I skied and went trapping with my dad and went, you know, cross country skiing and camping and all that. So, but uh, when I went to graduate school, I started swimming <laughs> the first the first uh physical exercise routine i did i enrolled in a ex swim exercise course i think it was called so it was me and this like really overweight kid and like these 60 year old women and men they could out exercise me like mad it was really embarrassing me and the, the overweight kid you know we'd be just panting ourselves three quarters to death at the end of the bloody workout and these 60 year old women who weren't in great shape were like you know chatting away uh, as if nothing was going on at all in the pool. So that was quite embarrassing. And all right. So there's a few things he said already. He had very bad habits. Drinking, smoking cigarettes, just wasting a lot of time. And I know for a lot of us, we have similar bad habits, right? Whether it's weed, alcohol, partying, watching too much random content, like we do have some bad habits and i personally had a lot of bad habits as well you know just watching a lot of shows watching nonsense i like i like smoking weed right so a lot of people i think in this time have that same issue a lot of people smoke weed a lot of people have trouble smoking weed right and even just going out to parties too often just spending too much time wasting not being productive and i think we all have that issue the thing is in those times right especially when we're like younger we're like 17 18 
those times are are cool like you know all right yeah we're we're going out to house parties we're we're drinking we're smoking a little bit we're hanging out with our friends we're still in high school we're just starting college and those things are just the the beginning of our worldview right we're just getting into those things and it's like wow like wow like oh no like i can do all this shit like you get that taste of freedom but then as you get like a few years down the line in your 20s like 21 22 23 a lot of people can remain stuck in that same loop and get trapped in that same loop and then they're still smoking weed every day they're still partying excessively they're still watching a bunch of random shows and random content and just not doing anything with their time and i'm not saying like you can't do any of those at any point in your life right i personally still like smoking weed but compared to the frequency that i used to do all those things a lot of things low things had to decrease and for guys who want to really level up and go to the next level in life and who have a bigger vision for themselves you have to be willing to sacrifice some of those short-term pleasures for the long-term goal still by any means if you want to you know every couple weekends every random holiday or whatever you want to grab it you want to go drink you want to smoke a little weed you want to watch a show and chill with your friends your family that's fine but when it becomes a super big part of your life and it's consuming major amounts of time that's when it becomes dangerous as was going to the weight room you know because when i started i could barely best bench press 75 pounds and people used to keep coming over and helping me which was the last thing i bloody well wanted but certainly needed and i got to the point where i could bench press 225 pounds i think that was the best i did and i gained about 30 pounds of muscle in a year and a half so that was a good thing so like i was kind of a wild man and you know i'm a little bit manic in my in my uh temperament and so you know i was i was kind of going every direction at the same time so and uh, you know I don't regret that I had a fine time when I was a kid and but uh, I needed really to get disciplined and I had to do it because I was working on these hard problems that you know that I've been discussing with all of you and I've been working on them really you know obsessively since I was probably about 18 maybe even earlier than that and got to the point around 25 when I was in graduate school trying to get my PhD so doing all my research like I published 15 papers by the time I graduated with my PhD which was by I think by a fairly large measure the most papers that any graduate student at that time had ever published at McGill I think that's right might have been twice as many or maybe twice as many maybe even three times as many and at the same time I wrote Maps of Meaning which was a terrible terrible terribly difficult thing to do because I was writing about three hours a day doing that and I couldn't do all that and continue with my misbehavior you know my sort of my what what would you say my 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 hedonistic my hedonistic my massive hedonistic consumption of alcohol and all of that I just couldn't keep it up and also work seriously on the issues that were at hand so you know I had to stop that's a sacrifice I had to stop all right, so he said a few things here. Mind you, Jordan Peterson is just already above the, the fray in terms of, like, the amount of time he's been in his career in his field. And to write 15 papers before getting your PhD, obviously, that's a big, big achievement. But the thing is, a lot of us underestimate the types of achievements we can make if we put in the time and effort and putting the work to get there. But the thing is, exactly what he was saying Throughout my life, I noticed that with the growing of my vision and with the growing of the kind of things I want to do with my life, I had to let go of some of those hedonistic behaviors and hedonistic mindsets in turn to secure the long-term vision. Because at the same time, the time you're spending like all doing drugs, you know, watching shows, watching content, wasting time, just doing nonsense... That's time you could be dedicating towards your skill. That's time you could be dedicating towards a craft. That's time you could be securing your future. That's time you could be leveling up. And he realized that at 25, you have to make a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice either the short-term pleasure or your long-term vision. And something is going to be losing at that point. But which one do you really want to lose? I don't, don't expect to 
to lose my long-term vision. My long-term vision takes higher priority in my life. And I noticed that from a few years ago. Obviously, there's times when I've personally just gotten trapped back in the hedonistic behaviors and trapped back into the partying, the smoking. But then I have to take a look at myself and be like, all right, cool. You know, like, is this really helping you get towards your, your goals and your visions? Is this helping you get to that higher purpose? And I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of guys get trapped in these hedonistic behaviors for so long, for so long, and never put enough time into building the things that they should be building because they lack some type of purpose. They lack a vision. Once you figure out what that vision is and that purpose is, it starts to become easy to let go of those hedonistic behaviors because you realize, all right, cool, I'm more in love with this bigger overall image of myself in the long term than I am with this short term image of me just wasting valuable time. And as I said, I, I still think there needs to be a balance where you're still being able to enjoy some of those pleasures and those things that are in your life. But you can't let those things overrun you. You can't let those things control you. And you can't let those things take too much of your time. Now, when it comes to like these things, right? Still, I'd say if you want to smoke weed, smoke weed. But you have to know your limits. Self-awareness. Decide, all right, cool. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to structure it. I'm going to make sure that it doesn't become too big of a component in my life to where it's starting to affect all the other things. If you're going to drink, if you're going to party, do it to a controlled level. If not, that's when things start to go out of balance. And I've, I've caught myself multiple times, especially like I said, I like to smoke weed, right? I caught myself multiple times to where the best balance I had was when I structured weed to like smoking it every once in a while or after a, after a, a week or after a period of time where I've noticed I've put in a certain amount of effort and I decided I want to take, you know, like a relaxation time and, and go enjoy myself. But at the same time, I caught myself in these cycles where I was starting to do it every single day, where it becomes every single day, morning, noon and night. I'm like, <sighs> you know what I'm saying? And it becomes just too much of your life and you're not focusing towards the overall mission. So these vices have to be controlled if you're going to still entertain these vices. If you want to cut them completely out, that's that would be even better and that's on you. But if you still want to include certain vices in your life, you have to be extremely vigilant with controlling those and managing those so they don't overrun all your other aspects. Messing about and straighten myself out. And I, I got married. Well, my, the woman who's my wife, Tammy, who, who I've known since she was eight years old, she lived across the street from me in this little town called Fairview. And I was in love with her like the first time I saw her, which is quite the bloody thing. So that's worked out pretty well for me. But she came to live with me about the same time and you know we decided jointly to get our act together and we swore that we tell each other the truth which I think she's actually done better than me like I don't think I don't think she's lied to me ever in our entire marriage which is unbelievable you know and it's been so useful because I can really tell her things and we can really talk so I tell you if you want to have a good relationship man you embed it in the truth because if you don't embed it in the truth you don't have a relationship it's it's just lies it's it's a tissue of lies and it will it will dissolve in the chaos as soon as the crisis comes along so the truth is a terrible thing but not not compared to falsehood so all right so let's look at the live chat all right so the last point he said i think that's an important point to like really go over once more telling the truth now in his relationship obviously it was more of like his wife and him in their marriage was expected to be a full full upfront honesty now, a lot of guys right now, you're not going to be in a point where you have a long-term relationship or any type of commitment, or at least you shouldn't be, I personally think. <laughs> but 
you have to still be able to look at things from a realistic perspective, from a point of, all right, cool, this is the truth. This is what is actually happening. I'm not going to lie to myself and delude myself and thinking that things are one way when they're the complete opposite. You have to have that brutal honesty and realism with yourself to really get from your point A to point B. And if you can't do that, you're going to be del delusional in terms of, I, right, you know what, it's okay if I party like three days a week. It's okay if I smoke weed every single day. It's okay if I do a lot of drugs all day. I'll still make it. Realistically, like, as guys, we don't have that much time. All right? Well, we have a lot of time. But in our 20s, we don't have that much time. Your 20s will fly by. Just yesterday, I was, I was 18. The day after that, I was 21. Now I'm 24. And as things progress and go by, they feel like they're just flying by faster and faster and faster. And every time I spend just wasting away, just looking at, you know, the things I've done in the past and the mindsets I had and the things I, I could have been doing in that meantime, I realize like, yo, a lot of time has been gone. A lot of time has been wasted. Mind you, I've done a lot of stuff over the years. But I could have done way more. And I feel like a lot of guys are in the same position. We're not being as intentional and as focused as we should be or could be. And that's where we're going to look back in five, six years when we're in our 30s. And we don't really feel like we have much for ourselves. Where our lives may not be as, going, as good as we expected them to be. And we're going to look at it like, damn. I wish I didn't party as much in, in my 30s, in my 20s. I wish I didn't do so many drugs. I wish I didn't waste time. And I've heard this story from people in their 30s who are not living the lifestyle that I want to live. They're like, okay, damn, you know, maybe if I didn't chase all this pleasure or random bullshit when I was 20, I would have been a different situation in my life. And I look at that, I'm like, all right, cool. I don't want to be like that guy. I don't want to live that life. I don't want to be where that person is. And I'm going to look at the things they made mistakes on, and I'm not going to do those. I'm going to take the opposite approach, and I'm going to look at the people that actually have what I want and what they did within these times, what they did within the times that I'm currently living in, and how I can use their lessons to get to where they're at. Time is going to go by regardless of what we do. Either we make the best of it or we don't. And if we don't, we're going to look back and be like, damn, I wish I did something different. And that's how you get to 60, 70, 80 with all these regrets, with all these missed opportunities, with all these things you wish you could have done. But. It takes a level of realness to look at yourself directly and be like, all right, fuck. I'm really nowhere yet. I really should be putting in more work. I really should be doing this. I really can be spending more time doing the things that matter the most. And that's all I just want to say. Obviously, it's a work in progress, but I think these are lessons that all of us can reinforce, even me. And I would even say from my perspective, especially me. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Leave your thoughts down below. And as always, stay official. Peace.